In this video, we're going to make velouté and supreme sauce. Velouté being our lead or mother sauce, and supreme sauce being our small or derivative sauce. So, the main ingredients that uh, are going to compose velouté are going to be flour uh, and clarified butter to make a roux and chicken stock. So really we're just making thickened chicken stock uh, with velouté. So, in order to make our velouté, we're going to start by adding the clarified butter that's going to form our roux. And our standard mirepoix, carrots, onions, and celery. I'm going to sweat the vegetables over medium heat, being careful not to brown the vegetables. Uh, I just want to start the cooking process uh, and get them sweat, and once they're sweat, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but it's important that we're not going to add that color. Uh, so as a result, I'm going to use about medium heat to sweat these vegetables. It's going to take about three minutes to get these vegetables sweat, so we'll come back and uh, look at them then. Okay, so it's been about three minutes uh, and our vegetables are sweat. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the vegetables have become a little bit translucent. Uh, they're starting to look uh, a little bit cooked here, um, but we haven't really added any color, and that's really what uh, we want to be careful of when we're sweating our vegetables. So the next step is I'm going to add my flour uh, to my butter here to make a roux. Once I add my flour in, it's gonna be important that I stir it and make sure that we don't have any lumps uh, as our roux begins to form. So I added my flour, I quickly stirred, and you can see here I have a nice smooth roux uh, with the only lumps being uh, the vegetables that we have in that are going to cook, uh, continue to cook along with our roux. So some of the quality indicators for Blonder are going to be a slightly nutty aroma coming off of the roux and a slightly darker, uh, darker color. Um, it's going to be really important as we're cooking our roux uh, not to try to rush it. Uh, a lot of people want to crank that heat up uh, to try to rush the roux uh, to the next stage, um, but this could give us uh, a bitter uh, quality to our roux, so we want to avoid that. So we're going to cook this roux over medium heat, stirring occasionally until we meet those quality marks for our blonde roux. Okay, so it's been another two or three minutes. Uh, our roux is meeting these quality indicators, slightly darkened color and slightly nutty aroma. Um, when I go ahead and smell my, my roux, I don't get that, uh, that aroma of raw flour. If you don't know what the aroma of raw flour is, smell some raw flour. Your roux shouldn't smell like that. It should have a little toasty nuttiness to it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give it one more stir. I'm then gonna remove it from my heat and I'm going to add hot stock to my roux. Now, what's really important when I add my stock is that I begin whisking immediately and I whisk thoroughly until all of the stock is incorporated. This is going to ensure that our flour doesn't clump um, or that our roux doesn't clump and that we have um, a nice smooth velouté with all of that uh, roux incorporated through the sauce. So. Uh, it is going to steam and, and bubble a little bit, so don't have your face right over the pot. Maybe stand back just a little bit. Okay. Let's see, I'm slowly adding my hot stock to my roux and whisking continuously as I do. Also notice the motion that I'm making. I'm going all the way around my stock pot here. Okay, I'm getting into all the corners along all of the bottom. I don't want there to be clumps of roux uh, that are stuck into the corners. I wanna make sure all that roux is incorporated into my stock to make my velouté sauce. All right, so now that I have my roux incorporated, we're gonna go back on the heat. 
and I'm gonna set this pan to about medium high and I'm going to bring this up to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer. Once we're reduced to that simmer, we'll check back in. All right, it's been a couple of minutes and our sauce has uh, come up to a boil and I've lowered it uh, down to a simmer. So you can see what that simmer looks like here uh, with those real small bubbles that are kind of consistently uh, bubbling through the sauce. It's not that really rapid rolling boil. You can also see uh, that some scum has started to collect uh, around the outside of our sauce. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna use uh, a spoon and just remove some of that scum. Um, this is just gonna help make our sauce um, nice and clear uh, instead of uh, that scum kind of boiling back in uh, and giving um, almost like a little curdled look to our sauce. All right, so you can see, just gone across, skimmed across the top here to remove some of that scum. I wanna leave as much of that sauce in the pan as possible. All right. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna add my sachet to my pot here and tied the sachet to the, the handle. Um, it's really important, uh, especially if you're using a, uh, a heat source uh, that has a flame uh, to make sure that that uh, string is uh, away from the flame so that it doesn't catch on fire. Um, in my sachet, I have peppercorns, thyme, parsley stems, and bay leaves. Um, what that sachet is gonna do is it's going to add seasoning uh, to my uh, sauce here, um, but it's gonna allow me to easily uh, remove uh, the sachet so that if at any point, maybe I wanna add less seasoning, um, you know, it's getting a little too seasoned, it's really easy to uh, pluck it out. So this sauce needs to simmer for about an hour. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but it does not need constant attention. Um, occasionally, I'm gonna come over and just give my sauce a little stir, make sure that I'm coating uh, the bottom uh, and sides of the pan well uh, with the spoon or spatula that I'm using. Um, if I start to collect any more of that scum across the top that we looked at before, I'm gonna go ahead uh, and remove that as well. So we're gonna let this simmer uh, for about an hour until it gets to um, our nap paste stage and we'll check back in then. All right, uh, it's been about an hour uh, and our sauce uh, has reduced to the correct consistency. We've gotten our nappe consistency. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and uh, strain this sauce to finish it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pair of kitchen shears and I'm just going to cut the twine that was holding it onto the pan handle. Use a spatula here, just squeeze it out a bit. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and strain my, uh, strain my sauce. Uh, there's a few different tools I can use for this. Um, in this video, we're going to go ahead and use a, a chinois or fine mesh strainer. All right. So um, if you're doing a large quantity of sauce, uh, maybe you can't lift up the pan, uh, perfectly fine to use uh, a ladle and then just ladle the sauce into the chinois. <clears throat> for a small quantity like this, I'm gonna go ahead and just lift up my pan. Pour it into my chinois. And then I'm going to use, I'm gonna use my rubber spatula to press the sauce through the strainer. You can see the sauce coming through out of my mirepoix that's collecting. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna to use too much pressure and really force that mirepoix through. Um, those carrots, onions, and celery have been cooking for about an hour, and I don't wanna incorporate their puree. I just wanna push the sauce through. So you can see, as I push, I've gotten most of my sauce out of my mirepoix now. And this is my velouté sauce. Now that my sauce is strained, Typically the next step would be to season my sauce, but we're not gonna generally season our mother or lead sauces because we're going to turn those sauces into other sauces. Um, a really good example of why we don't season uh, is highlighted in the supreme sauce that we're going to make. So the first step in making supreme sauce is reducing velouté by a quarter. So if I had seasoned this velouté perfectly and then went ahead and reduced it, the base of our sauce would be 
uh, overly salty, uh, which we don't want. So um, I could go ahead and store this velouté now, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn this uh, lead or mother sauce of velouté uh, into a small or derivative sauce called supreme. So the first step, as I said, in making supreme sauce is to reduce velouté. So I'm going to put my pan back onto my burner. And over medium or medium high heat, I'm going to bring it to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and reduce by one third. So I'm gonna go ahead and get cleaned up a little bit. We're gonna let our sauce reduce and we'll meet back here once our sauce is reduced by a quarter. All right, uh, it's been about 20 minutes and our velouté uh, has reduced and thickened. Uh, we reduced by one quarter. Uh, and as you can see, the velouté uh, is much thicker. Uh, it really clings to our uh, spatula now instead of just lightly coating like that nappe. Um, so with this reduction, uh, we've gotten this thicker texture. It also will have uh, intensified our flavor a little bit. The next step this recipe for velouté calls for is for us to temper our cream. Uh, generally, we're going to see the temper technique applied when we use uh, milk uh, or eggs for thickening. Uh, this recipe is asking us to temper our cream. So to temper, what we're going to do is we're going to put our cold product, in this case cream, into our bowl. And then I wanna slowly incorporate my hot velouté sauce. What this does is it just slowly increases the temperature of the cream. And when we're using dairy products or eggs, it's just gonna help ensure that uh, the product doesn't curdle or break by slowly increasing that temperature. All right, so I've slowly added my velouté to my cream. Now I'm going to put the pan back on the heat. I'm going to add the tempered cream and velouté, reduced velouté, back into my pot. Scrape out the bowl as much as I can. And we're going to bring this back to a simmer. So it's been a few minutes and our sauce has been brought back up to a boil and then reduced to a simmer. Uh, during that time, uh, I was occasionally stirring the sauce using a, a rubber spatula. Um, it's important to do that. Uh, and when I use my rubber spatula, really getting uh, along the sides and corners and along the bottom of the pan, dragging that uh, spatula along, uh, not just stirring into the sauce, but really scraping along the bottom. Uh, dairy products have a tendency to scorch or burn to the bottom of the pan. Um, so it's really important to not allow that cream to scorch to the pan by occasionally stirring uh, anytime this sauce is on the heat. So to finish my supreme sauce, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the, uh, the burner off and we're gonna finish it uh, just off the heat. I'm gonna add just a squeeze of lemon juice. Salt and white pepper. And I'm gonna uh, use a little less salt than I think I'm ultimately going to need. I can always add more salt. It's really difficult to uh, take it out once it's in. Um, it's impossible to take it out once it's in. Um, so I'm gonna season on the lighter side and then we'll do a final seasoning adjustment uh, on the end. So lastly, I'm gonna add just a little bit of white pepper. And finally, my whole butter. So I'm again going to use my whisk and I'm just going to kind of lightly incorporate uh, my salt and my pepper and my lemon juice and stir until that butter is melted. Okay, that whole butter has melted. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna strain my sauce into my fine mesh strainer.
Okay. Just use a rubber spatula to push that sauce through. And then finally, I'm going to do a last uh, taste for seasoning adjustment. Okay. So I think this needs just a touch more salt. Another little squeeze of lemon. Go ahead and incorporate that final seasoning. And that's perfect. Let's review. First, when making our velouté, we want to make sure to sweat but not brown the mirepoix. Next, don't rush the roux. We want to cook the roux over a medium heat. Turning it up is only going to burn the roux and make it bitter. Finally, we generally aren't going to season uh, lead or mother sauces. We're going to wait until we transform them into the smaller derivative sauces before adding seasoning.